And this is one of those stories that's once again going to be kind of rewriting textbooks. But not because something groundbreaking was discovered, instead this is something a little bit more intriguing and a little bit more fascinating. We're going to be talking about Neptune and Uranus, with a recent groundbreaking study definitively establishing that all this time we were kind of incorrect about the color of Neptune. But not because it was recently measured to be different, or because the telescopes got better and so we see more, instead this is actually a kind of a story of how as humans we process information over time and how we tell stories to each other, eventually influencing our understanding of everything around us, including facts and even scientific facts that can be misconstrued over time. And not because someone lied or because of some kind of a fake news phenomenon, instead a result of people not reading a side note and focusing on the visual presentation, taking it as a scientific fact. And so, how wonderful person this is Anton, today we're going to be discussing this relatively recent study that once and for all determines that, yeah, Neptune is actually not the color we always thought it was. Here's actually one of the recent images released by Hubble from just a few months ago. And it does not really look like this at all, with all of the images presented in the last few decades sort of being really exaggerated and not really showing us the true colors. And really because it formed, I guess, a kind of a trend without anyone ever checking if this is really correct. And also because a lot of digital cameras used on a lot of different telescopes very often just send us digital data that then has to be reconstructed by scientists in order to make visual sense out of everything. And though for many planets like Jupiter, we basically know that it doesn't really look like this, and this is more of an artistic representation combining different frequencies including infrared into one, or here's one with the ultraviolet light for comparison. With Neptune and Uranus, the story is entirely different. And here I actually wanted to start with one of the videos you can find in the description that talks about a relatively recent study from 2022 that tried to explain why Neptune and Uranus look so different despite extremely similar composition and even relatively similar distance from the sun. And the focus here was on colors only. And just to summarize that video, essentially it was all because of the distribution of different hazes or different types of molecules such as for example ethane and ethine and even things like methane that seem to make Neptune just a little bit darker. And according to that study, Neptune basically just has an additional layer with a lot of methane condensation that makes it look different. And though by itself the study is definitely still correct and does present us with a really good explanation, what's intriguing here is that it was all based on misconceptions about the true colors of these planets. And so how exactly did all of this start? Well, it all started back in the 80s. NASA's Voyager 2 probe that was launched back in 1977 collected a lot of imagery from all of the gas giants, and that of course included Neptune and Uranus. But the images for Neptune and Uranus were taken in two separate color bands. And when the probe sent back the data to planet Earth, the researchers processed them in slightly different ways. Here's for example raw data from the James Webb Space Telescope of Neptune in infrared light. And so these initial images looked somewhat similar, they didn't really have a lot of color in them. But when the images were released to the public, they were processed in a way to emphasize the colors for Neptune, and specifically by deepening its true colors, making it appear a lot more blue. And though Uranus was published in its true colors, the images for Neptune were a little bit more dramatized. They were enhanced to make them look slightly different. Now it's not entirely clear why this was done, but it was probably to present these two planets as basically different. They did look extremely similar initially. This is of course what these images looked like. And so a lot of this blue color in Neptune is technically artificial. But intriguingly, this was not a deception. As a matter of fact, there was a side note. A tiny caption explaining that the Neptune's colors were enhanced and did not represent reality. But who reads captions anyway, right? I mean, maybe you do and maybe I do, but over time, this tiny side note has been completely lost. With Neptune becoming bluer and bluer over time. And here's how blue it looks in the Hubble images from 2021. Now once again this is enhanced to make it look slightly more dramatic, but at this point the scientists working on this basically thought that this is indeed what it might look like and they just had to bring up the colors to make it appear as Neptune should appear. Making this an extremely interesting example of misinformation spreading over time 
and technically becoming scientific fact. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure in most textbooks that have Neptune in them, it's going to look just as blue. So if you're still at school, or if you have a child at school, I guess get one of those whiteouts and start spreading the colors, making it look as it really should look. It should be extremely similar to Uranus. And here's a fun fact. When I was making this video, I went on Wikipedia and guess what? All of the major images for Neptune have been correctly changed to represent the true color. It even says this in the captions. Even this iconic image that compares Neptune to planet Earth has been changed to reflect the reality. And this is indeed what Neptune looks like. Extremely similar to Uranus, actually let me show you the comparison, and practically indistinguishable from the other ice giants. In contrast, this is what it sort of looked like just a few months ago. So yeah, this is a huge difference. But all of this came as a result of a recent reconstruction of these original images by essentially using additional data from the Hubble Space Telescope and the data from the Very Large Telescope in order to reprocess images once again by focusing on true colors as opposed to enhancement. And so these new images show us Neptune as much, much lighter and definitely not blue, but still a tiny, tiny bit bluer than Uranus. Once again, you can sort of see this in this image. And that's of course related to that study from last year in regards to the methane condensation in the atmosphere of Neptune, or basically a tiny thin layer of various types of hazes in the atmosphere that shift the colors just a little bit. Although here these new observations also tell us a little bit more about Uranus and why this planet changes colors slightly over time. Specifically over the period of its year which lasts for 84 Earth years. Because the planet orbits on its side, the effects from the Sun tend to change the poles of this planet, making them appear slightly greener. But during different seasons, when different parts of the planet face the Sun, they shift to appear a little bit bluer. And so basically the changes in color on Uranus, not on Neptune, are entirely due to its orientation as it orbits the solar system. So once again this planet orbits on its side, and here is roughly how it changes over time as viewed from planet Earth. This shows us the change over a period of approximately 45 years. And the main explanation right now suggests that it's very likely because of methane once again. There's more methane on the equator than in the poles. And this changes the way Uranus reflects light. Since methane absorbs red light, it basically reflects green light, making Uranus appear a little bit greener at certain times. But this does not happen on Neptune, because Neptune does not spin on its side. And at the same time there is something else Neptune has that Uranus doesn't. Clouds and different types of storms. Now interestingly the clouds on Neptune seem to have disappeared for now, although it's currently unknown why, but it's most likely some kind of a seasonal change. But more importantly, Neptune's atmosphere has a lot of active storms. Here's an example of a very famous great dark spot. Something that seems to be dynamic and changes over time and sometimes disappears. Now both Jupiter and Saturn also have different types of storms, but for some reason Uranus doesn't. And so despite similar colors, these are still very, very different planets. Neptune even has unusual hot spots in its atmosphere where the temperature can be up to 750 Kelvin. This cannot be coming from the Sun and so it has to have some kind of a different origin. Previous studies suggested that it's probably some kind of an aurora or some kind of a magnetic reconnection, but the real reasons are still unknown. Which means that there is still so much to learn about both of these planets and someone should definitely consider launching a mission to either one of these planets or maybe even both planets at some point in the future. Here's another interesting image of Neptune in the infrared light showing us the clouds as they change over time. This was actually taken just a few hours apart and so the atmospheric activity here is quite extreme. And so in conclusion, all of this reinterpretation was because of this study. And all of these previous images that showed Neptune as much bluer, in essence were kind of incorrect. Here's one of the more extreme examples that really shows this planet as super blue, which it definitely is not. And so since we've been actually finding a lot of these Uranus and Neptune-like planets out there, in a lot of different star systems, understanding the true colors of these planets and what's happening in them is also important for a lot of exoplanetary studies as well. And so next time when we hear Neptune-like planet, we shouldn't really imagine this as much as this. So yeah, definitely important and definitely a really interesting example of how a tiny side note can be lost in time and eventually lead to a complete misrepresentation of real scientific facts. And in this case, even a lot of NASA scientists seem to have forgotten about this. But luckily, after a few decades, 
Someone caught the mistake and now we have the true picture. Anyway, on that note, check out one of the previous videos in the description that talks a little bit more about discoveries from both Neptune and Uranus. And thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.